Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a super podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. The market's up 25% since you were won. You tweeted this out that nobody in the media brings it up. So I said, you know what, I'm going to bring it up tonight. $5.2 trillion in wealth created. We have the lowest unemployment rate in 16 years. Thanks, Obama. We have the, lo- the best labor participation rate in seven years and the best, the lowest number of people on food stamps in seven years. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. Really well. I'm loving it. I'm doing a job for the people, and uh, people are seeing that. And I'm so proud of the $5.2 trillion of increase in the stock market. Now, if you look at the stock market, that's one element, but then we have many other elements. The country, we took it over at owed $20 trillion. As you know, the last eight years, they borrowed more than it did in the whole history of our country. So they borrowed more than $10 trillion, right? And yet we picked up 5.2 trillion just in the stock market, possibly picked up the whole thing in terms of the first nine months in terms of value. So you could say in one sense, we're really uh, increasing values and maybe in a sense we're reducing debt. But we're very honored by it. We're very, very happy with what's happening on Wall Street. What? OK, what the? What the F is he talking about? Okay, what is he talking about? This is this is this was a fan fest last night on the Fox News that masqueraded as an interview. Same thing happened with uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders' daddy, who interviewed him, uh, you know, last week. I mean, these little fan fe- What is he talking about? That we we he said the country we took it over and owed over twenty trillion as you know the last eight years they borrowed more than it did in the whole history of country so they borrowed more than 10 trillion right and yet we picked up 5.2 trillion just in the stock market possibly picked up the whole thing in terms of the first nine months in terms of value so you could say in one sense we're really increasing values the hell is he talking and maybe in a sense we're reducing debt that is not how any of this works that's not how it works that's not how any of this works Wall Street has no connection to the debt of the U.S. No connection at all. That's number one. Number two, what legislation has he passed that he's saying he's responsible for anything? Anything at all to do with the economy? What single piece, what what legislation besides for naming a post office or, 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 what has he, what has he passed? We don't even have a budget. What, what, what is he, I don't even know. Okay. Just so you know, oh my God, the stock market dictates the value for the shareholders, people who buy that stock. The debt is money owed to the government and the two have nothing to do with each other. Nothing. What was he, I mean, this is, this is why this is why he's such a salesman, though. You know, the people that were sitting there last night, they heard increased value. They heard, uh, you know, tr- trillions of dollars thrown around, $5.2 trillion in the stock market. <clears throat> they heard we owe uh, $20 trillion in debt. And they, oh, well, we made back all the money. I, first of all, $5 trillion is not $20 trillion, so I don't know how they could even get there from that. And also, Wall Street has nothing to do with the economy. I mean, literally nothing to do. It's a global trading place. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't, and, and Hannity asks no follow-up question, doesn't say, uh, but, but, but how are you conflating the debt with the, uh, with the stock market? What does one have to do with the other? And what, what legislation do you credit with this, uh, you know, great turnaround in the debt or in this great turnaround in wall? What, what legislation can you point to uh, that you would say to the American people, see, this was the, the piece I fought for so that I could improve you. This, he's passed nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay, so there's that. I'm telling you, he has no idea. Now he's talking about the tax cuts. Okay, here goes the tax cuts. Well, first of all, it's a massive tax cut. And, you know, it's a reform, but it's a massive tax cut. Somehow, And 
you know, when we first introduced it, and for years they talk about tax reform. I said, the problem with the word reform, nobody understands what it means. Because reform could mean you're going to raise taxes. This is the largest tax cut in the history of our country. It is incredible. It's going to put people to work. So right now, Sean, we are the highest taxed nation in the world. And we're going to be now down in the lower rung in terms of taxes. All right, let's just fact check right there before we continue on with his uh, BS on tax cuts for the wealthy. Um, He says we are the highest taxed nation in the world. That is not true. That is not correct. That is not accurate. That is not right. We do have a high corporate tax rate uh, among developed countries. We have the highest corporate tax rate. But we also have the most deductions available to corporations. And so when you take that into account, when you factor in the deductions that are allowed by law, the effective corporate tax rate in this country could be zero for GE. And in fact, it is zero. He just makes stuff up. Now... Here's another way to look at it. How much of our gross domestic product do we make in taxes? Okay. The America, uh, our tax revenue is 26% of our GDP. Most other industrialized nations get 34% of their gross domestic product from taxes. Denmark gets 34% of their gross domestic product from taxes. France, same. Sweden, same. The United States, a measly 26, 25 percent of our gross domestic product comes from taxes. And that is because we do not have the highest effective tax rate in the world. He keeps on saying it. It isn't true. Sarah Huckabee Sanders was asked to debunk it. And she she did very poorly, very poorly. Taxes. The president repeated this claim in the Oval Office today, saying we're the highest tax nation in the world. Why does the president keep saying this? Uh, It's not true overall. We are the highest taxed uh, corporate tax in the uh, developed economy. That's a fact. But that's not what the president said. That's what he's that's what he's talking about. We are the highest (laughs) corporate taxed country in uh, the developed economies across the globe. Sarah, so that's that's accurate, but the president keeps repeating this claim that we're the highest tax nation. And that's what, we are the highest tax corporate nation. That's that's not what he said. He said we're the highest tax nation nation in the world. The highest tax corporate nation, it seems pretty consistent to me. Sorry, we're just gonna have to agree to disagree. The highest taxed corporate nation in the world. I don't even know what that means. Do you know what that means? Because I don't know what that means. She doesn't know what she's talking about. And the president does keep saying we have the highest ta- uh, we, w- the, the highest taxed, the highest corporate tax rate in the world. And that's not true because it doesn't take into account the deductions that are afforded legally to corporations so that their net tax rate could be zero, could be 2%, could be 1%, could be, you know, uh, uh, 25%, whatever. This is just a lie. And she can't explain it either. She did really, really, I mean, he keeps saying we're the highest taxed nation in the world. And anytime you challenge him, he'll just say, you know, the, oh, we have to agree to disagree. It's not true. It isn't true. But even if it was, if Wall Street is doing well, that means that publicly traded companies are seeing record profits in our tax system, uh, record profits that shareholders are then enjoying the benefit of. You can't have both things. You can't say corporations aren't seeing their full potential, but Wall Street's through the roof. It makes no sense. So there he is talking about his uh, freaking tax cut. Now he starts talking about uh, uh, Colin Kaepernick and why his First Amendment rights should be taken away. A lot of people, I was surprised watching all last year with Colin Kaepernick. Guy praised a murdering thug dictator. Did he just call him a murdering thug dictator? Or that he praised a murdering? Which murdering thug dictator did Colin Kaepernick praise? Wow. He had socks that depicted cops as pigs. 
yeah. and and other issues he actually donated to a charity that actually supported a cop killer and then we saw the nfl and you took it on it appears based on the letter that roger goodell put out yesterday that donald trump initiated a debate over standing for the flag and our anthem and those that fought blood and died and looks like you won can i just tell you one thing right there they're sitting at a national guard uh air base okay so this is the well-regulated militias air base and they are actually applauding more guns on the street uh that makes for very very nervous cops <laughs> Just saying. Okay, that's just an aside. So I watched Colin Kaepernick, and I thought it was terrible. And then it got bigger and bigger and started mushrooming. And frankly, the NFL should have suspended him for one game, and he would have never done it again. They could have then suspended him for two games, and they could have suspended him if he did it a third time for the season, and you would never have had a problem. But I will tell you, you cannot disrespect our country our flag, our anthem, you cannot do that. But you could disrespect the First Amendment. You could. And you could only advocate for the Second Amendment, which you do. And the Second Amendment says, a well-regulated militia being necessary for the preservation of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And you're sitting in a National Guard airbase which is the well-regulated militia. So you're telling me that people with uh, Uzis or people with AKs or people with ARs or people like the guy in Vegas or the people, you know, at Waco or whatever, you know, a uh, mass shooting, uh, you know, a uh, Dylan uh, Klebold or, 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 or the, the crazy kid with the orange hair, that they are better at protecting the free state than the National Guard unit that you're sitting in right there is. You're insulting them with this. You're insulting their service by saying that these random people who shoot stuff and kill people are better at preserving the free state than the National Guard is. Uh, but I digress. Obviously, the people of the country are with you. The people hundreds of the country. Of thousands of people fought, bled. Hundreds of thousands died fighting under that flag. Right. Um, when you look at the Obama years, Chicago, one city his adopted hometown, 3,900 people were murdered. Well, of course, if you're gonna talk about Colin Kaepernick and you're gonna talk about police brutality, then you must bring up the inner city known as Chicago. You must bring up, but don't, don't talk about the guns that come to Chicago from Wisconsin, and don't talk about the guns that come into Chicago from, Illinois, from uh, Indiana. Oh no, oh no, just talk about the scary black people. In the last six years of Obama's presidency, 18,000 shootings. I don't think he it's mentioned it, but three or four times. Yeah, it's hard to believe. And disproportionately, his economic policies hurt black Americans, Hispanic Americans right. more. That's very sad. How will your policies help minorities oh, that are still struggling? Well, first of all, minorities want police protection more than anybody. They need it more than anybody. It's what's going on is crazy. And you look at some of these inner cities where it's just out of control. And remember, I was saying things like, we will, you know, what do you have to lose? We will fix it. We're going to fix it. But one of the things we're doing very strongly now is the inner cities. Now, Chicago is out of control. I don't know what they're doing in Chicago. To have what, what is he doing strongly for the inner cities? Anybody? 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 What is he doing for New York? What is he doing for Philly? What is he doing for Chicago? What is he doing for Houston? What is he doing for... I, I don't... I mean, what is he talking about? And there's no follow. Like, what, what are you doing for the... He actually asked him a question. Not that he's going to get an answer. And there will be no follow-up. Just a big discussion about scary black people in Chicago. This many shootings and this many killings and all of the different things that are going on. This is not like it's the United States of America. And pure and simple, that's oh. bad management. Oh. That's bad politics. It's incredible. And then... You talk to them. Why aren't you doing something? They don't even want to talk to you about it. It's, it's really insulting to our nation. And whether you take on the NFL or you take on Chicago and some of our other cities, there shouldn't be murders like this. And, you know, we have incredible police in this country. They could stop it if they were allowed to do their job. Why? They could stop it. Why? Thank you. Hey, Sean. In many cases, it's the police are not allowed to do their job. What? They have to be politically correct. We're talking about lives of wonderful people. And 
They have to be allowed to do their job. And you will see it stop. I'll never forget I was in Chicago. And a police officer, there was a motorcycle deal to the plane, and I was talking to the police, I was taking a picture. I said, how do you stop this? We could stop it immediately, sir. Okay, this is the mystery cop. This is the mystery cop story that he told on the campaign trail, and he's, he keeps changing the time it would take to stop it. If the police were allowed to, I don't know, shoot everybody uh, for no apparent reason, just, you know, uh, ethnic cleansing or something i don't know but uh you know uh, this is a repeated an oft repeated lie by trump um he said this to bill o'reilly the disgraced sexual molester chester the molester bill o'reilly that he he, he quoted this mystery cop uh, again and he said that the mystery cop told him that he could stop the the shootings in Chicago within a week if he was allowed to do his job. Then it became he could stop it in two weeks. And then yesterday it became the mystery cop could immediately stop murders in Chicago. (laughs) But when you talk to people in Chicago about what is the problem in Chicago, they go, we live in the real world, and if the president wants to build on the reductions in violence that our hardworking officers are achieving, then he could do something to stop the gun flow into our city from Indiana and Wisconsin. Go to RandyRoads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.